Welcome to Rika Subtest 1 online test preparation course presented by RikaTest.com. Thanks so much for joining us in this lesson. You will learn everything you need to know about competency five, which is understanding important terminology and concepts involved in phonics instruction and recognizing the role of phonics and sight words in reading development. Let's begin. In order to understand the role that phonics and sight words play in students' word identification, let's start with the understanding that word identification is the ability to accurately read words aloud. Note here that just because a student can correctly read a word aloud does not signify that the reader understands the meaning of the word. So let's put word identification and word recognition side by side to fully understand and differentiate their meanings. Word recognition is the ability to decode words. Now, this means that when a student has achieved word recognition, this student can both correctly read the word aloud as well as understand its meaning. Once students acquire these word identification skills, they can begin to achieve the ultimate reading outcome, which we call automaticity. This is the ability when students are able to fluently read without being hindered with trying to decode the words they are reading. In short, automaticity theory is the ability of a student to decode words and understand the meaning of the text which they read. Children can build up to reaching automaticity using four word identification strategies. These include phonics, sight words, morphology, and context clues. Let's go over the first now. Phonics is the instruction used to teach children the association between the sounds of letters and their written symbols. For example, this is knowing that the PH in phone makes the F sound. Sight words are the words that are taught to students as a complete unit to be memorized by sight. Common sight words include be, but, do, have, he, she, they, and was. Next, students use morphological clues to identify a word's meaning through its root plus affix or suffix. Let's see an example. Undeliverable. If a student came across this word and it was an unfamiliar word, the student could use morphological clues of the word to try and figure out its meaning. First, the student would look at the root, which is deliver. The student probably knows what deliver means. So next, the student looks at the end of the word, called the suffix, which is able, meaning can or to have the ability to do something. But the student isn't finished yet. This student sees that there is a prefix still to be considered. And this student knows that un means not, such as unknown or unhappy. So the student uses the identification strategy of morphological clues to uncover the meaning of the word, which the student understands to mean that the object cannot be delivered. It is undeliverable. It's important to note that two parts make up morphological clues. The first is structural analysis, which is analyzing the parts of the word to understand its meaning. This is what the student from the previous slide just accomplished. Second is recognizing a word by its syllables, which is called syllabic analysis, undeliverable. The fourth strategy of word identification is using context clues by looking at a word surrounding to decode the word. A person here might use the words next to, above, below, as well as pictures or captions that might also be on the page in order to help understand what the text means. There are four types of sight words that we need to teach our students. The first are high frequency words, and these words appear frequently in the texts that students read and includes words like I, can, we, and the, and so forth. The second type of sight words are words that have irregular spellings. 
such as again, caught, and climb. The third type we teach are words that students are asking about because they want to be able to use them. We call these want to know words, and they might include the words like dinosaur or Disney World. The fourth type of sight words we teach kids are words that are found in textbooks that will help the children learn their classroom topics better. These are called content area words, and they're often found in social studies, science, math, technology books. Example words include carnivore or ecosystem. Learning phonics is a crucial step for students to reach the goal of reading, which remember is automaticity. Now, understanding phonics and sight words helps students understand word recognition, where recognizing words swiftly and accurately will bump the student into reading fluency. And because the student is reading fluently, they are not being bogged down with trying to decode the words that they're reading, which this will improve the student's reading comprehension. And now that the student is understanding that which is being read, they progress and reach reading automaticity. In this next section, you will learn about the sequence of teaching phonics and sight words. Letter to sound correspondences need to be taught beginning with consonant sounds, which are the most simple linguistic units to move to next irregular sounds, which are more complex linguistic units. To begin, remember that students start by sounding out one letter at a time. Eventually, they move to recognizing words, and then sentences, and then whole passages. Consonants are speech sounds that happen when the airflow is obstructed in some way by using our mouth, our teeth, or our lips. The letters they produce are all of the letters that are not vowels. Continuous sounds are sounds that can be pronounced for several seconds without being distorted. Stop sounds are consonant sounds that are formed by completely stopping airflow. Consonant digraphs are two-letter combinations that have one sound, such as in the pH in phone. A blend is two letters that are sounded out together, but you can hear both letters. The word blend has two blends in it, bl, bl, and nd, nd. Vowels are sounds made when the air that leaves your lungs makes a vibration in your voice box. Then there is a clear passage from the voice box to your mouth. In English, vowels include a, e, i, o, u, and sometimes y, and also W, such as in sky for Y or cow for W. A long vowel is when the vowel says its own name. A short vowel happens when the sound does not make its own name, such as in bat. Vowel digraphs are two vowel combinations that create one sound, such as in the OA combination in boat. Diphthongs are the glided sounds made by vowel combinations, such as the OI in oil or the OU in about. R controlled vowels are sounds that are neither long nor short, such as in the word car and are controlled by the R. L controlled vowels are vowel sounds that are neither long nor short, and the vowel precedes a consonant, such as the I in milk. Next in the sequence of teaching phonics is common inflected morphological units, which include prefixes like inter, micro, bi, anti, and many more. Suffixes such as ist, ment, able, ness, and also many more. And words without affixes that do not change from their root word, such as in bacon, giraffe, unscathed, as well as others. Teachers teach common word patterns using this graph. We move from left, which is the utmost simple, to the right, which becomes more complex. Keep in mind that in the pattern row includes V, and the V stands for vowel, whereas C stands for consonant. Take a moment here to examine and take note of this table. Moving on to the next sequence of teaching phonics and sight words, we have why some words are phonetically irregular and some are never decodable. 
The English language has phonetically irregular words, which do not follow the general rules that work for most of the time. Common examples include of, the, and was. The English language is unique in that the rules of language are often broken, meaning there are plenty of exceptions to our language rules. For this reason, we teach sight words, which are the words that students are taught to memorize as whole units. The majority of these irregular words are placed in a category called function words because by themselves they don't carry meaning. Examples include the, of, and was, but there are many others too. Believe it or not, we actually teach some words that are decodable as sight words. Yes, it's true. Can you guess why? Well, there are two reasons, and they are, number one, words that kids see a lot. These are high frequency words, so kids need to learn how to read them early on. And number two, a part of the word, such as the phonetic pattern, will not be taught until much later. An example of this could be the word park, where the R-controlled vowel pattern won't be taught until first grade or even second grade, but the child will oftentimes want to use this word. The next sequence for teaching phonics and sight words is the common syllable patterns and syllabication as applied to decoding multisyllabic words. Here are the rules to remember to split words up by their syllables. First, divide compound words between their two words, such as teapot and toothbrush. Next, divide words with prefixes, for example, unable and pregame. Next, do not divide a consonant digraph, for example, painter or phonics. Now, let's clear the list and make room for more. Next, we have divide words between their two consonants, for example, brother, mother. Divide words with a single consonant in the middle of two vowels, for example, cabin and level. Next, we have divide words with a consonant in the middle between two vowels, for example, be long and fever. In this section, you will learn the five stages of development between phonics and spelling. These five stages of spelling development include pre-communicative, semi-phonetic, phonetic, transitional, and conventional. Let's look at each stage individually. The first stage is pre-communicative. This is where the student's spelling shows no understanding that letters represent sounds. At this stage, the student will draw pictures or make squiggles. The second stage is semi-phonetic, where the children use letters to attempt to represent sounds. The child understands that letters represent sounds, but the understanding is poorly developed at this time. Now, at this stage, the child may correctly write the first letter of a word, but the rest does not match. The third stage is phonetic. This is where the child understands that each letter of a word represents a sound. And in the phonetic stage, Although students understand that each letter represents a sound, they will often choose the wrong letters to represent the sound that they hear when they try and sound a word out. Teachers at this stage must encourage students to keep writing, as although the student may understand their spelling is not correct, the teacher's expectation is that the spelling will improve over time. The fourth stage is transitional. And this is when a child understands the majority of the sound to symbol relationships in the English language. They understand that each sound comes from a letter. At the transitional stage, the child mostly chooses the correct letters to spell words. And the fifth stage is conventional. At this stage, almost all words written by the student are spelled correctly. At the conventional stage, students are usually able to look at a word and understand if it is spelled incorrectly. As children practice reading, they become better readers. This exposure to words and language will naturally support the student's spelling. Furthermore, a teacher's phonics instruction will help students learn spelling patterns even better. Spelling instruction and vocabulary development are connected because phonics instruction increases students set of vocabulary knowledge. Writing exercises help to give students the opportunity to apply their knowledge of sound to symbol relationships in English. 
In this lesson, you learned about phonics and sight word terminology and background information. But before we leave, let's review the key content we learned in this lesson. The difference between word identification and word recognition is that word identification is the ability to read words aloud, but it does not mean necessarily that the student understands the meaning of the words. Whereas in word recognition, the student shows the ability to decode the word, which means to accurately read it aloud, as well as understand the meaning too. Next, we learned that the ultimate goal with phonics instruction is to help our students reach reading automaticity. And this happens when a student isn't being bogged down with trying to pronounce or read a word. They can simply read the passage swiftly and accurately, meaning they show fluency and also comprehend what they're reading. We as teachers must provide sight word instruction because the English language breaks a lot of grammatical and spelling rules. And therefore, kids need to learn some words called sight words by sight or as a whole unit. These sight words are particularly important because they often appear in high frequency word lists, such as the, of, and, was, and so many more. They rarely carry any meaning by themselves and kids need to use them, so we need to teach them early on. Word identification skills help students decode words that they might not already know. There are several methods that we teach to build students' word identification skills However, on a general viewpoint, we teach the children how to use the words that surround an unknown word as well as any pictures or captions. This is called using context clues. We also teach the students how to dissect a word by identifying its root and affixes to decode a word, and remember, that is structural analysis. When teaching phonics and sight words, there is a basic sequence that teachers always need to follow. And this is that we teach phonics and sight words in the order from simple to complex. Next, there are words in students' sight word lists that are actually decodable, yet teachers continue to teach them alongside the sight word lists. The reason of this is that they might include challenging words that students really enjoy using, like dinosaur, or words that will help them describe their everyday life, such as in park. There are five main stages of spelling development. For Eureka test, you'll want to know the distinctive aspects of each stage. However, you can also show your understanding on the test for real life knowledge by sharing that not all student levels fit neatly into just one stage and that a student doesn't necessarily pop into a new stage overnight, but actually spelling is a gradual process. Phonics, word identification, word recognition, Reading, spelling, and vocabulary are all interconnected. The more a student is exposed to books, the more they read. And the more they read, the better readers, spellers, and advanced word users they become. Furthermore, if you see the word orthography on your RECA test, know that this is a synonym for spelling. So orthography is also spelling. Thanks so much for joining us on this RECA test lesson. When you are ready, take the Competency 5 quiz to check your understanding for this test material. And we look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.